it was on my dad's YouTube account. So I went into the bathroom and I was like, dad, take that down right now. They're about to show it in my uh-huh. son's dad's like down. <laughs> so, and now it's like nowhere on the internet. I still have the video. So maybe later on in life, I'll, <laughs> I'll put it back. Bring it back Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Awesome. Um, my name's Adam, and this podcast is about you and your journey in music, and we'll talk about the new song and what you got going on. Amazing. Cool, cool. So first off, talk to me about where were you born and raised? In New Jersey. So I've been in New Jersey my whole life, yeah. Oh, you're still in New Jersey? I'm in New York. I bounce over to LA all the time. Now I'm going to London, so oh I'm wow, not really in New Jersey anymore. <laughs> I'm everywhere. I can't really say I'm somewhere right now. Right on. That's amazing, though. Um, so what was it like growing up in New Jersey? I mean, it was great. I'm really close with my family. Um, New Jersey is great. I mean, there's not it's nothing like New York, but I'm right outside of it my whole life. So I used to always go there like at least three times a week. And just <laughs> so I kind of went back and forth between Jersey and New York all the time. I was going to say being that close is probably fairly easy to just be like, oh, I'm going to hop on the train and head into <laughs> head into it's, New York. It's honestly today. bad. It's I'm there all the time now because it's so easy. <laughs> That's funny. I lived in San Francisco for a little bit or in the East Bay. And I was just always thought about that. Like if I was in high school, I could just jump on this bar train and just head into the city whenever right, I know, it's you know whenever I wanted to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, what about music? Do you come from a musical household? There is not a single person in my family that does music. My family's really? actually like tone deaf. My sister can't sing. Like, I'm an oddball in my family. I don't know where I came from. That's interesting. What about how, like, did your parents put you in piano lessons or anything like that growing up? Or did they see that you had oh, so, uh, an ear for music? Well, yeah. So I always asked my parents where I came from. If I ever was just like singing around the house, they said I was always singing. There was always music playing in my house, and they always saw me just like sitting and listening and just like not talking to anybody growing up. But, um, it was always when I was home alone, I'd lock myself in my room and just start singing with a karaoke track on YouTube and recording myself. And then I'd go live on this app called You Now. And- oh, I've heard of this. I haven't ever been on it, but I've heard, who did I, I interviewed somebody else that kind of yeah, got a following a while there. ago where it was like, if you want to live a double life where your friends aren't all on the app, but the people that want to be are, that's where <laughs> you go. <laughs> so I went on you now and I literally used to just put my face out of the screen and sing. That was when I was really young, like 13, um, honestly younger than that maybe. And then I released my first cover on YouTube when I was 10. And wow. that's when everybody was like, oh, she could sing. Like, that's crazy. Um, yeah, but wait. Every- so prior prior to that, you were just doing this as you know, uh, kind of a thing that nobody knew about. Just when people weren't around, you were singing. Like everybody knew that I sang. It was definitely like a thing, but I never actually sang for people. I had the biggest stage right when I was little, so okay. everybody knew it was like my little side hobby. But nobody knew I wanted to take it seriously until like later on in my life. Okay. So at 10, you do a cover, put it up on YouTube. Tell me about that. What was the song you covered? When I was your man by Bruno Mars, it's no longer up on YouTube for (laughs) 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 reasons. But um, yeah, I remember my parents left the house and I was home alone and I was just sitting in like my guest bedroom. I went upstairs to my mom's room, did my makeup with her makeup. I was like, Rachel, this is going to be it. Like you got this. I sat down and I put my computer on the bed and I was just like, Okay, here we go. And I showed my parents when they got home and they were like, wait, Rachel, that's actually really good. Like people need to hear this. And I was like, wait, guys, really? Like, okay. <laughs> and then when I got to high school, it was up for a while. And when I got to high school, not as like a bullying thing, my friends were just like, oh, we're going to show the teacher. And I remember I like went in, it was on my dad's YouTube account. So I went into the bathroom and I was like, dad, take that down right now. They're about to show it in my uh-huh. son's class, like down. <laughs> so, and now it's like nowhere on the internet. I still have the video. So maybe later on in life, I'll, <laughs> I'll put it back That's up. good. You said, but you yeah. weren't in the video. It's just your voice. No, I was in the video. Oh, you That's were in that video. First okay. First time I was in the video and just like. I was going to say, you did all your makeup and everything and then you weren't in it. But okay. So you were in, in the video. <laughs> yeah. What prompted your friends to be like, okay, it's science class. Let's get that video up. Were you guys chatting about it or something? So, um, so after that video, I mean, when I was in high school, I started actually posting YouTube videos and I started okay. singing lessons when I was 13. So it was actually a thing that I was a singer and 
got it, it. Serious. so my friends were just like oh like teacher doesn't know you sing like let's show her but they wanted to just like joke around and show that one. show that like, video okay i understand now okay, so guys. at 13 you got the voice lessons or that's when you started kind of pursuing it more seriously was that based off of that video did it do well or like were your parents just like wow like she actually can sing let's lean into this i honestly don't even remember i i'm sure it did somewhat decent i i don't remember that video was such like a big milestone but now such a small one that i never went back to check i probably okay. should okay <laughs> okay okay um yeah no i started taking singing lessons when i was 13 um for my birthday like when i was 12 i'd asked to go to the studio so it just started becoming a thing where i was like i'm obsessed with this and when i got after like when i started singing lessons after that i just posted covers all the time i didn't even know i could write music Okay. And um, I went to high school and I started posting videos every Thursday, I'd say, just posting covers. And that's when it started building uh, oh, like, like an audience, building a little audience. Yeah. And then my manager found me off of a video that I posted on YouTube. And, yeah. On YouTube. I was singing Remedy by Adele. OK. Just like, oh, my God, there's like a whole story behind it. It's a funny one, but we'll get it if you want. But, I want to hear it. Did you mind? Yeah, sure. I mean, okay. so my best friend's grandpa is okay. friends with my manager's parents. And he called my manager when he was on the beach and was just like, hey, like, I have a girl for you. Like, there, she's a great singer. He's like, OK, like, what do you have? Like, what is sure. it? Like, <laughs> another grandparent being like, I have a kid. Like, she's a good singer. Um, and my manager told me, like, the second he heard my voice, he, like, ran off the beach and called him and was like, give me this girl's like information like where who is she um wow. we, yeah we ended up being from the same town um and we met at like my local diner that I just grew up in and from there he looked at me he's like do you play any instruments and I was like mm -mm. and he's like do you write any music and I was like no <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay do you ever hear melodies in your head and I was like literally all the time and he's like do you ever write down lyrics and I was like 24 seven he's like but you don't write music and I was like no and for some reason I genuinely thought that was like everybody I thought everybody just hears melodies in their head all the time oh, like wow. I was so clueless and uh my parents were in the meeting as well and he was like guys she needs to get a keyboard and just like start so the next day they got me a keyboard I remember I bawled my eyes out I was like this is the start of a new thing and my manager was like write three choruses and send me it I don't care what it sounds like just try and I just wrote three choruses. I sent it to him that day. I was like so in it. And I just pressed on the keys and I tried figuring it out. And from there, I flew out to LA and I started doing sessions and it was kind of like sink or swim. And I just, I guess I swam because now this is what yeah. I do for a living. But yeah, I was in love with the idea of writing my whole life. I just didn't know I could do it. And once I realized, I was like, okay, now I'm obsessed. That's crazy. I mean, all it took was like one person to, to really push you and say okay you know you just do this you can do this let's do this and then yeah you know you get in sessions and, and it kind of changed your life there yeah I mean I always had a passion of just helping people like my whole life I was like I want to be a therapist or go into psychology and I just always had a passion um and I never knew that I could do it through music because I didn't know I could write I didn't know how to really like navigate into that world uh -huh. and once I did I was like okay wait this is how I'm gonna help people I'm just gonna write music and have it relate to everybody and kind of be that therapy for other people because that's how I envision like that's how I cleared my head just listening to music and relating to it so I was like sure. okay I do that for one person that's why that's why I'm doing it now so yeah it was like a really weird realization that day and from there I just became obsessed with the idea of helping in that way Wow. And with, with those three courses you wrote, did you ever build on those songs? Oh, no. Okay. Those <laughs> are dead. Like, and then that became, <laughs> I'm going to be like, whoa, no. like right out the gate. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. Definitely. Were you intimidated at all? I mean, getting obviously validation from, from your manager saying you, you're good and then taking you on after hearing the first things you ever wrote. Were you like when you wrote those three courses, was it like an obsession? Like, okay, this sounds good. I got to like, how many times did you rewrite those things or was it, you just got oh it out and it just was easy? I write new music like every day now. It's kind of a part of my routine. It's like literally my therapy at the end of the day. If I'm thinking about something, that's the way for me to close a chapter. Like uh -huh. I literally sit down and I write and then I'm good. It's kind of like my journaling is my songwriting now. 
But I remember at the time it was like, it became an obsession really quick. Like I'd come home from high school, I'd to do my homework or I'd honestly write first and then do my homework later. It was like priority yeah. flipped. And um, yeah, then I just started writing and writing and writing. So I wouldn't say the first couple of months were great, uh, but for some reason I was like, oh, I got this. Like, look, I did that. And I didn't even know I can. Uh -huh. uh, but it just became like this weird obsession, but it didn't ever feel like work, which is why it was so cool. Like I love doing it. So obviously I'm not going to say I was a pro when I first started because that's right. not true. Um, I guess there was a flip in my brain where I always knew I was a singer, but I never knew I could write. So that took some adapting where I was like, oh, wait, I could do that too. Um, and I just feel like the more you do it and the more sessions you get into, the more you learn and the more like you get better at it. So mm -hmm. yeah. It's like I a mean, muscle that you have to keep exercising, so to speak. Time. And I mean, when you get into sessions with people, that write, you just learn and learn and learn from them. So now, now I'm confident in my writing abilities. But when I first right. started, what am I doing right now? <laughs> like I've, I mean, I've never being, written a song. But I mean, being flown out to LA to be in these writing sessions, was that, I mean, I'm sure exciting, but were you nervous at all going in, not kind of knowing anything and being like, okay, I'm kind of green to this whole thing. Like, honestly, not really. I, I <laughs> for some reason, it felt really natural from the jump. Like I, wow. I wasn't really intimidated. I think it's just cause it, everybody's so nice and welcoming and it's more just like such a, normally my sessions start with just having a conversation about what I want to write about and just like getting to know each other first. So it's not like you go in and you're like, okay, let's write. So I think <laughs> right. like, what do you got? Know, exactly. <laughs> I think like just getting to know them and um, like enjoying the people I'm in a room with made me more comfortable and just feeling like I can open up and show my ideas. That was when I was like, okay, wait, no, I I'm just here to have fun and enjoy and write something authentic and true to myself. And mm -hmm. if it's great. Then it's great. I didn't know what to expect, obviously, but I don't know. I, I just, I was obsessed with the idea from the jump. So I guess I was just more excited than I was nervous in the beginning. Sure. What, what were you still in high school when you were going to those original writing how was that like were your friends like oh my gosh she's gonna be a songwriter like this <laughs> yeah. is crazy yeah yeah I mean it was definitely really cool my friends were like oh you're back here now and you were in LA for a week like thanks for ditching us Rachel but <laughs> um now I mean it's such a con like it, it's a constant thing like I go to LA every month but um I remember when I first went to college my friends were like what are you doing like why are you going to college like, <laughs> and I was like guys what like normally your friends are the ones that are like maybe you should get an education to like fall right out. they were all like Rachel what are you doing like <laughs> why are you going to college and I was like guys I'm going I lasted a month <laughs> I left college so they were right but they were more excited for me in the beginning they were like what is going on and they were so invested and now they're like ah oh, this is Rachel's normal life like she there she goes again you know so, that's cool yeah, um, was did you go to college for music or was something or that you're talking about being a therapist or doing something like psychology was that what you so, went into college for or no uh, so I was I kind of went to college to like make my parents happy to have a fall of course yeah I know that this isn't <laughs> what I'm gonna do so I went to school in New York because I was like okay I could actually do this in New York and keep writing in New York and make connections but I went to school during the pandemic the first wave so I moved Ooh. to New York and it's literally a lockdown I have all zoom sessions so Maybe that was a big reason why I was like, okay, this isn't going to help me at all. But I studied right. digital marketing so that I can learn how to promote oh, brilliant. and everything. Yeah. Uh, but the first year of college, you kind of get thrown into classes that are random. So yeah, I, I know. I feel like the first two oh. years are like, what is this? Like, why am I learning math? Like, I didn't want to, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I thought that's exactly. why I got to go pick what I wanted to do. And why am I paying for this? Um, <laughs> that's why I was like, I'm not making it to next year. So I might as well just stop now. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you graduate and then you, you started college and then the pandemic happened? Yeah. So, oh, I okay. so you, you got to graduate and everything wasn't like, you had to go put your no, no, no. cap it on and like still... virtually walk or something. Yeah. It was virtually walk and the whole, no, you did. Yeah. Oh man, that sucks. We had like a virtual one and, a, and then we had like a distancing in-person one when it started clearing up a little bit. So yeah, I graduated oh, during man. the pandemic. Yeah. That must have been such a bomber. Oh my God. Yeah, I've talked to people like that. Or they'll, they had like a scholarship for football or something. And then it's like, well, there's no 
<laughs> there's no sports. So yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Like, oh yeah. man, that's a bummer. And the craziest thing is that my first LA trip that I was talking about, that was right before the whole world shut down. So it was like, I got the taste of like, oh my God, wait, I want to go back. I want to keep writing. And then it all shut down. And then Zoom session started. So a lot of the music that's out right now of mine, I wrote on Zoom, which is really, really, yeah. So really weird. Is um, that hard to do? I mean, versus going in person or did you, pref- do you like writing in Zoom or does it I not matter either way? I prefer writing in person, but okay. I, I just, anything, I, I write with people still on like FaceTime with my friends where they're like, Rachel, let's write. And I'm like, okay, all right. But um, I guess it gave me a weird in the beginning, I was like, is this what it is? Like, I don't really understand, but everybody was getting used to the Zoom at the same time. Uh-huh. So definitely opened doors where it was like, okay, all of us are sitting doing nothing. I get to work with people all the time. This is really cool. And now I work with people from LA and I could do it on Zoom. So it was cool, but getting a taste of like in person and actually talking to people and writing versus Zoom was a weird thing when I was first starting out. I was like, this doesn't make any sense, but it was great. Like yeah, I, I mean, oh. it does. Yeah, right. It opens the door. So now you can work with somebody across the world, right? And right. it's not like, okay, I'm going to fly. That's going to take three days. And then I'm going to do this. And then it, it like exactly. just clog onto the computer and you're you're there. But yeah, I would imagine kind of vibing with somebody right away is different than, okay, I'm, we're on this thing. We've never met, but you're like, tell me what you got. You're just like, right. uh. it, was the weirdest. <laughs> it was It was the weirdest part was like, you go on zoom and you know these people through zoom like the producer that i work with all the time i met him through zoom and then <laughs> i met him in person and i was like this is weird like i <laughs> we've done multiple multiple sessions you know so much about me and we've never met like ever in person yeah so you had like your zoom friends that you would meet later on and it was like what is happening right now this is like a foreign That's... concept to everybody. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, Did you continue? Like, I mean, you said you built like a following on YouTube. Uh, was that something you can continue doing after you started writing your own music? Did you continue with the covers or did you just kind of let that go? And how did you continue the social media? Yeah. Thing? So I didn't keep, I didn't continue covers because I didn't want to make myself a cover artist. So once I started realizing that I could write my own music, I was like, let's take a step back and actually work on who I am and the kind of artist I want to be and what I want to put out. So the first year I started working with my team, uh, my manager was kind of just like, let's, take everything offline, work on it first, and then start a TikTok and start rebrand your, like, you know, so we kind of did rebranding and um, like artist development before I actually said, hi, I'm Rachel Gray, here's my music, Um, which I'm so happy about because if I kept doing covers, it kind of gave me like a different, who knows? I mean, (laughs) I'll never know what it would have done, but yeah, I just actually got to write music and then, release it like at the time that I wanted to and not just like present myself and then be like okay wait hold up I don't have music yet so I I worked offline for a little bit before I did it that's smart yeah rebrand and then when you came out was bad timing the first one you put out yeah bad timing. okay tell me about that was so this is the first time this is you like presenting yourself to uh, your I'm an artist here's my song was that that must have been like tell me about that experience what were you feeling when that came out yeah I mean it was crazy I wrote it at my first trip um with such talented people it was so weird like just finally putting out music that was mine and not posting covers and I got to actually tell a story that I've always wanted to tell I wrote it about an old relationship that I was in thought I was all heartbroken and everything and wrote bad timing now I listen back and I'm like wow I was so young and (laughs) I don't even know why it was so deep like you know but it was so cool like actually finally putting music out for the first time and getting people to hear what I wanted to say instead of just retelling stories through other people's music. It was just such a cool um, change in my life. And then it does well, right? I mean, it could have went the other way. Right. I mean, yeah. So, and then it starts doing well. Is it like, oh my gosh, not only is this my first song, but it's now it has almost 3 million streams on Spotify alone. I think it's always a weird still, I think it will be forever. Just like, that number in your head you don't ever realize how many people that actually is so it's like wow it's doing well and I'm like wait I get dms all the time being like this song changed my life and I'm like it's just crazy to think that I wrote this song in a day with people that I really love and then I'm helping so many people in this world with just that song so 
I think at the time it's like I write for myself and then I release this song and it does well and I'm like whoa people also relate to me like this is crazy so when I first started it was more like I can't believe that even one person wanted to stream my song and now that there's millions I'm like wow this is uh <laughs> this is <laughs> insane but it's, and, it's the best feeling ever and people latching onto it in the way that you you were hoping right I mean you wanted to help people and then you write a song and then that's what you're you're getting you know affirmation from people saying like this really did help me and you're like oh wow like that's what sounded like that's what you wanted originally literally that's all I wanted I wanted one person and it's just a bonus that there's this many people now that follow me and and relate to me and want to listen to what I have to say just for them to feel relatable to me and it's so cool it kind of feels like I'm forming this family I call my fan base a friend base I feel like I'm just becoming best friends with everybody that watches me which is really cool um yeah but it's so weird it's like still people are like Rachel I'm obsessed with bad timing and I wrote that when I was like 17 and I'm like this is so cool like <laughs> yeah but it's great uh, that's awesome what would you say like uh, another like the next kind of milestone moment for you would be like I mean you put that song out it does well and obviously everything you've done after that has but was there another moment you're like whoa like this is happening like, I can't believe it yeah I mean I feel like every song I put out feels like another milestone it's obviously hard like in the moment to be like wow because you're in such a routine but I released a song called Friend Like Me. Actually, before it, I covered a song called It'll Be Okay by Shawn Mendes. And that has like 130 something thousand uses on TikTok. And it was just like, I didn't even know it was happening. And it kind of blew up in Indonesia, which was crazy. And that was a moment where I was like, wow, this is nuts. And then I released another song called Friend Like Me right after that. And I was making eggs, like as a joke, I was like, guys, this is like a song I just came up with. Let me know if you want. And I was like singing with a spatula in the morning for breakfast, just <laughs> singing the chorus I came up with. And that blew up like big time on TikTok. And still people are like, oh my God, it's the egg song. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what is happening right now? So those two back to back was like such a big milestone where I was like, where is this coming? Like, I love it. This is great. But like, this was meant to be a joke. And I ended up writing a song that I, I really cared about out of it. And now people love that song too. So, I mean, there's been a lot of milestones with just really so cool. Yeah. I mean, it's TikTok to me is so fascinating because it's like you said, I just kind of did this as a joke, but obviously it was a song that you cared about. Uh, but then people not only love the, what you were doing in the video, Oh, it's the, you know, the egg song or whatever. And they're sharing it on social media, but you're getting nearly, you know, almost 4 million people to come over to leave TikTok, come to a different app to stream the song. Like that right. next like step just shows like how, you know, that people actually care about the song. Cause yeah, it could have been one of those things that nobody like, oh, it's a great sound. It could have trended on TikTok or whatever, but then actually taking the next step to move to a whole nother app. I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but it really is for people. Yeah, it's it was crazy. I mean, that one was also crazy because it was like, I realized it was blowing up and I was like, oh, uh, okay. I got to finish this song. It wasn't, because oh, it done. wasn't done yet. Oh, I literally God. wrote a chorus. I didn't even have a producer. <laughs> like I was like, this was a joke. Like it was in my drafts. I had nothing to post that day. I was like, okay, post it. Like <laughs> who cares? And, um, a couple of days later, there were producers that were just hopping on it and like putting a beat behind it. And it was so cool. And there was this guy that blew up even more than my video did. Like it was just insane. But yeah, I mean, actually getting people to want to listen to a song and go off and hear the full version when it wasn't even a song is just mind blowing to me. But yeah, I mean, I'm very thankful that people actually want to hear the full story of what I'm trying to tell and not just fall in love with the little snippet on TikTok. Right, right. Wow. So it, once it's doing well, are you like how quickly you're like, uh oh, like this is not uh oh, but like, whoa, this is something I need to like, I should fin I need to finish this like now. Yeah. I mean, with this song, it was like, I literally called my team and I was like, gosh, I don't know what's happening right now, but like, I think I need to finish this one. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> what do you do? Um, it's not, it isn't uh-oh, but at the same time, it's like, oh, like, oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it's kind of like, uh, pr there's probably not pressure, but more of like a, a, a rush to do it. Cause it's like, oh For man, sure. like I get it done. Yeah, there's pros and cons with TikTok, of course, but if, a viral moment happens you need to act on it as fast as it's happening so 
definitely rushes the process a little bit and you just not like you have to be on it. Um, but I release music all the time on TikTok, some that I'll release, some that I'll never release and just came up with an idea that night and want to hear what they have to say about it. A friend like me was kind of that. And I was like, OK, wait, I need to act on this one for sure. Yeah. It was supposed to be a joke, but now it's not. And we got to work <laughs> with it. But yeah, I mean, I guess you got to act on it as soon as you see something popping off and then pray that it goes as long as that, you, yeah, people, <laughs> you know, yeah. People, Sure. Well, well, I mean, I mean, that's so cool. And it's, it's cool that you can kind of do that with your, your fan base on, on TikTok or, or wherever it may be, but like to post a snippet and see if people care. It's like almost like you're a little, like a, like you're getting feedback right then and there from something that you're working on. Right. Like, is this good? Or you'll see the numbers right away. Like, is yeah, this worth it? I get to throw it out for a little test. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It is. <laughs> <A> little... <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to hear about the the new song you just released, right? Person, right time. That's the newest one, Craig. Yeah. Awesome. Well, tell me about this song. Right person, right time. I wrote about a past relationship that I was in and just wondering what it would be like if we were a little bit more mature and if we were a little older and knew what we actually wanted. I feel like a lot of the time when you're in a young relationship, it's like this person was great, taught me a lot, but like we could have ended up being so much better if it was later down the road. Uh So- I've always had this thing where I never really believed in finding the right person at the wrong time. It was always like, they were good for this time in my life. Like they taught me what I needed to learn in this time. But like, what would it be like if we met again? Like, would we last? Would it be terrible? Would we be able to have a relationship? So it was more the what ifs. Um, I walked into the session. I was like, guys, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but like, what if my relationship happened now? What would it be like? And yeah, that's how it kind of came along. And was it this was this was done in person later? It wasn't like one of the the songs you said that you were. No, no, no. This is a recent one. In. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love the video that you did. Tell me about the video. It looks like you're having so much fun, like just kind of messing around and like eating noodles and pizza, and, and now you're on this bus and it. But <laughs> it's all like stop. It's all photo. It looks like it's all pictures, and it's just kind of like yeah, like the snapshots of different parts of your life with this person. Right. It was so much fun. I didn't really want to make the video exactly what the song was about. Mm -hmm. I wanted to let other people have their own interpretation of what this story can be. So, I mean, I was in London when I shot that video, which was already cool on its own because that was my first time in London. I met this guy. Oh, wow. I met this guy like, what, 10 minutes before. (laughs) Oh, oh, really? They're like, here's your boyfriend. (laughs) Yeah, my boyfriend for less than 24 hours. We had a great day together. Um, Yeah. of like this dream sequence of a really healthy relationship and then later on in the video obviously it's up for interpretation because I didn't really make the ending like glued to exactly one plot you could have figured it out on your own but sure it was the guy that found another girl and I was at that restaurant and saw him on another date so yeah it was I wanted to make right person right time what other people wanted it to be rather than sticking to that exact narrative that I wrote it about but it was really fun. It was actually a great day. We were really just enjoying ourselves. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, you guys go to a grocery store, you're in a record store. Like, yeah. I, that, I'm sure you had a blast just kind of you know, traveling great. around. It was a great day. <laughs> and was it all filmed? I mean, it looks like maybe it was just edited that way. So it looks pictures. like yeah, it's we just all put- pictures. Yeah. So oh we shot gosh. over like 2000 pictures that day and made it into like this flip book type of thing. We just wanted to. I wanted to make like a, a different type of video and see how that would do. And it was really fun. It was really cool to just create something really different that I haven't seen. Yeah. I haven't seen a video like that either. And that's so that blows my mind that it was all done with photos too. So whoever edited yeah. that, like hats off, like that must take some time. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Yes. <they're> amazing. <laughs> oh, well, that's awesome. And I'm sure are you working on new stuff and you said you're going back to London and in New York and LA and yeah. Are you writing all over the place now? Is that kind of what? Yeah, I am writing. All for? Over the place. I do have a um a song coming out soon, but I haven't said what it is or when it's being released, so I'm not gonna. Say that, <laughs> okay, but cool. Yeah, this one's a really special one, and I have leaked it and tested it a little bit, and it's like my most wanted song, so I'm really excited to actually put it out and show everybody. But yeah, I go to LA really soon. Back to London, I have a lot of things coming up that I'm really excited about. That is so cool. Well, thank you so much for doing this today, Rachel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I really had a great time.
I have one more question before I let you go. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, I have so much. That's a great question. Um, something I wish that I would have known when I first started out was like, as long as you're genuine in what you're trying to say, the numbers and the people will, will come with time. A lot of the time you compare yourself and you're worried about like something not hitting a certain number. Everybody starts somewhere. And just as long as you know that the timeline is meant to be the timeline for you, it doesn't have to be like the same thing as what happened to Jack Harlow or Doja Cat. It goes on your own terms. Just enjoy what you're saying and be genuine and uh, release what you love and everything else will come with it. Bring me a bad word.